So I noticed uh, the YouTube commentator Historicity wrote on my video from 24 hours ago that uh, he was miserable, but uh, due to real physical ailments and not because of my girly emo crap. So, I've got news. There are no physical ailments that are not affected by your girly emo crap. What the fuck? What the fuck? And there's no physical condition that's not affected by your emotions and your thinking. There's no thinking that is entirely divorced from your physical condition and your emotions. And there's no physical condition separate from your emotions and your thinking and no emotion separate from your thinking and your body. So in other words, we're a unity. We're all a mixture of girly emo crap and physicality and mental processes. And they all operate simultaneously interacting with one another and are impossible to separate. For example, mental processes occur within the body. Girly emo crap occurs within the body. Uh, courage comes from a state within the body. And what goes in, on in the body, it's always affected by your emotions. For example, I'll notice that lonely people get sick a lot more often and a lot longer. Like if someone's going through a divorce, a breakup, they've just been fired, much more likely to get sick. Someone has a heart attack what do they usually get told to do to take on a new way of living it's going to put less stress on their heart and part of that's a mental attitude and an emotional state where you don't let the little things bother you so if you know anyone with uh, heart problems and they're an angry rageful vengeful anxious person You'll sometimes like see them like gripping their heart, you know, bending over in pain when they're throwing a temper tantrum. At least I, I know someone like that. I used to work for someone like that. So you throw temper tantrums on a regular basis. Like he'd blow up at you off of for no reason whatsoever. He'd be raging and ranting and throwing stuff. And, uh, and then he'd like double over with chest pain. And then he'd say, you're killing me, you're giving me a heart attack. So his emotional state had a big influence on his heart trouble and his heart pain. And the way he thought, okay, to go back to cognitive therapy, there's A, the activating event, there's B, your belief system, and then C, there's the, there's the consequence. So Let's say right now someone runs into the back of my vehicle. Okay, that's the activating event. B is my belief system. If my belief system, oh, this is horrible. This is uh, the worst thing ever. You know, I'm sunk. I'll never be able to recover from this. Uh, I feel my back going out. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be bedridden for days. I can't afford this right now. I'm totally screwed. That kind of thinking, well, you're really going to get into a negative state of mind. You're going to be depressed. You're going to be much more likely to experience back and neck and head pain. Because what is back, neck, and head pain? Almost always, unless there's a structural reason for it, it's simply the consequence of unnecessary muscular compression. Because of unnecessary tightening and compressing and pulling down and these weird interfering tension patterns. That's what causes almost all muscular pain. 
almost all back pain, almost all neck pain, almost all headaches. And you never get that tightening and compression and those weird interfering tension patterns without catastrophic thinking. Oh no, this is horrible, this is worse, this is really bad, I'm screwed. Okay, you never get that physical reaction without the depressing, uh, negative, angry, uh, intense emotional state. So they go together. You don't find people who are calm, easygoing, serene, basically happy, and who are filled with weird interfering tension patterns. And you don't find people filled with weird interfering tension patterns. So they're basically stuck in fight and flight with their head jutting forward and their shoulders rising up and their neck compressing and they're all, all weird and compressed. and Like they're in that lock and load emotional state, which has a very real physical manifestation, the fight and flight complex. Okay, you never find people walking around like this who are otherwise serene and uh, happy. So, historicity, I missed uh, some of your comments there. If you feel like posting them again, um, I'll definitely try to respond if I can do so without getting into a, a car accident. So, whatever goes on in your mind, it ripples through your body. So, if I look at someone, I can pretty much tell what's going on in their mind. And, of course, the, the better I know the person, uh, the more accurate my my sense will be for example what's the most truthful part of the body and I think all guys are gonna say is the penis the penis never lies okay so aside from the penis most truthful part of the body is the feet the feet don't lie when you're stuck talking to someone you don't like your feet are gonna be angled away from the person if your feet are defying gravity doing a happy little dance means you're really happy, such as you're on a date and the girl's like jiggling her shoe on her foot. She's really happy. If uh, you're really into someone, then your feet are gonna angle towards the person. If you hate someone or a situation, your feet are gonna be angled away from the situation or person. So the feet are a, uh, probably the most truthful part of the body. But uh, whatever goes on in your mind, it ripples through the face. You can see it in people's uh, uh, attention patterns. Oh, historicity, thank you very much. Deserve to be on TV, both you and Kevin. Yeah, Kevin Michael Grace definitely deserves a nationally syndicated radio show. That's amazing. And uh, you never have a strong emotion that doesn't manifest in your body, okay? When you feel joy, like your, your feet, your arms, you're gonna start defying gravity. They're gonna be, ah! You're gonna manifest that joy. When you're feeling depressed, you're gonna be compressed and slumped over. You cannot be depressed in the physical alignment that I'm in right now. Basically got upward direction. My face is free of unnecessary muscular tension. My shoulders are free. My arms are free, my wrists are free, everything's free. Basically upward oriented through my spine. My neck is free, around my eyes is free, around my lips there's freedom. So you can't be depressed in this state, you can't be angry in this state, you can't be rageful and filled with a desire for vengeance. To get into those intense negative emotional states, you have to compress and pull down and get out of alignment. You have to move into a certain alignment. Emotions are only possible with a particular alignment of the body. Okay, you're not, you can't feel happy when you're like this. All slumped over and compressed and depressed with weird interfering tension patterns. Happiness is basically an upward orientation through your body. It's like, yay, you feel light. Okay, you feel light, you feel happy. Depression, only possible if you pull down, compress, interfere, tighten your musculature, your muscles, okay? Depression, rage, resentment, anger, those are only possible with a particular alignment of the body. So too, peace, joy, serenity. These emotional states are only possible with particular alignments of the body. 
You're not going to feel peaceful and serene when you've got all sorts of weird tension patterns shooting through your body, <laughs> okay? Because those weird tension patterns never just come out of nowhere. They're precipitated by thinking. They're precipitated by thinking catastrophe. Oh, no, I'm so screwed. I'm being taken advantage of yet again. Nobody loves me. I'll never get laid. I'll never close this deal. My workday is just never going to finish. This client's impossible. How am I supposed to deal with a situation like this? Okay, all that thinking produces tightening, compression, pulling down, and uh, just crunching your body so that you can then get into that really angry, depressed state. But unless you crunch yourself, you're never going to be able to feel those emotions with intensity. As long as you're free, moving freely, as long as you've got upward direction, you're just not likely to be able to strongly access those, those emotions of, of anger and rage. And this is really important for actors, because actors need to embody all sorts of... Uh, uh, emotional states and if they have if they're not able to reset themselves to zero okay if they have all sorts of interfering tension patterns then they're never going to be able to properly express the emotions of, of joy and happiness so a lot of actors can only play bad guy roles and because they've got such ingrained tension patterns they can never they can never demonstrate in a convincing way, happiness, serenity, joy, peace, and ease. Because their instrument is compressed. Their instrument is broken and flawed. And they don't know how to get out of the own way of their own habits of thinking that lead to rage, resentment, compression, despair, unnecessary muscular tension. So, I can be on here talking about emotions all that emo those emotions when they ripple through you when you struggle with them when they overcome you you're going to have physical manifestations and they're not only going to have physical manifestations they're going to shape your thinking so you can never think outside of your body the mind cannot be separate from the body because the mind and uh the, the nervous system all take place within the body. There are no emotions separate from your body. You can't feel happiness outside of your body. You can't feel joy or anger, serenity, ease outside of your body. All emotions, all thinking is mediated by your body and all physical pain is mediated by your nervous system, your thinking and your emotions. There are all these strands that cannot be disentangled because we're all one unitary being. We can't, we can't have this idea, oh, if only I could get control of my emotions, you know, then I'd be fine. Because the emotions, the emotions come from particular ways of thinking combined with certain alignments of the body and without those cognitive patterns and without those alignments of the body you wouldn't have access to those emotions they'd be considerably diminished so how do you think a great NFL quarterback plays when he's worried about his wife or his mistress or his tax bill or his his parents or his brother or his friend you just you're not going to play as well uh, sometimes when I'm doing my streams with Kevin Grace I'm distracted by this problem or that problem and uh, and you just can't escape this this unity of being of the, the body, the mind, 
and the emotions. And then I would throw in as a state faith statement, uh, if, if this works for you, the soul or, or the spirit inside of us. So, I remember realizing these things, reading about them and realizing they were true, that, and just being blown away by the, uh, the simplicity. Emotions are only possible with certain alignments of the body. Each emotion requires certain alignment of the body. Get out of that alignment, you can't really feel that emotion. What's going on in our body has a profound effect on our emotions. I know when I started studying the Alexander Technique, uh, I started moving out of, of being locked and loaded, that kind of being compressed and, and, and tight. And, and uh, my life just started freeing up. I started seeing a lot more choices. I started experiencing a lot more choice in my emotions, a lot more freedom, a lot more ease. Because I had all these tension patterns, compression patterns, ways of tightening my neck and my shoulders and my back that uh, I wasn't even conscious of what I was doing. And so I was living my life in a straitjacket. What tends to happen to us is that as we age, our habits of unnecessary muscular tension become increasingly strong. So as we age, we increasingly live our lives in a straitjacket. And you see this, as people age, they become more and more tight, compressed, and have all these weird interfering tension patterns. So that more and more of life becomes uncomfortable, if not impossible for them to participate in. And so life becomes miserable so they seek for solutions such as Netflixing out or alcohol or drugs or hookers or gambling or sports or anything to distract them from the misery of being in their body and there's no effective distraction for the misery of being in your body generally speaking uh, on the other hand to get on Nietzschean I think it was Nietzsche who said, uh, when you know why, you can, you can undergo almost any how. If you have a good reason for something, you can, uh, you can overcome almost anything. Like if you love your wife and your kids, you will happily work 60 hours a week. If you love your religious community, You'll volunteer for hours a week and give give it most of your uh, disposable income. If uh, if you love your sibling, you'll sacrifice for your sibling. Like if if the work you're doing is important, you'll go the extra mile. And so that's why it's so important to have a sense of meaning, like to have have a purpose for your life or to have many purposes for your life. I think that's best. You want to be there for your friends, you want to be there for your community, you want to be there for your people, you want to contribute, you want to learn, you want to grow. And when you have all these motivations, then you have more and more strength to overcome everything that uh, life throws at you. On the other hand, when you don't have these motivations, when you don't have people to live for, reasons to live, uh, religion to live for, or some kind of transcendent purpose to live for, then you're much more easily going to get sidetracked, you're not going to use your time efficiently, you're going to succumb to a lot more physical ailments. I know that when I'm living in community, living with people that I love, that I'm at my best. I'm just pumping with adrenaline. I just I love my friends, love my community, love my girlfriend, and uh, I love contributing. And uh, when obstacles come along, 
like, yeah, I'm like ready to tackle them. So thinking is important. Understanding your purpose in life, like where you can be of service to other people. That gives you a reason to get up in the morning. Like I get up every morning and I'm a happy guy. I'm a happy guy. Like there are all these things I want to do. I want to explore various topics on my on my stream. I want to read a book. I want to write some blog posts. I want to volunteer. I want to learn. I want to learn new skills. I want to solve some problems. When you got a why, when you got reasons to live, then you can, and you can overcome almost any adversity. And I find, for me, the more connection I have to other people, the more reasons I have to live. The more passion I have in my life, the more strength I feel, the more I can overcome. Like when I'm feeling lonely or isolated, I don't feel nearly as strong, not nearly as able to wrestle with the challenges that life puts before me. But uh, when I have people in my life, I can turn to them for help, I have inspiration, I have, I have connection, I have energy, I have drive. I have momentum. I have a sense of calm. I find like being personally connected to people, it's, it's a way of just kind of being regulated.